Cool. Thank you very much. Great. Well, first of all, um, uh, two pieces of good news for you guys. Uh, the first is I know we're running a little bit behind, and so I only have 10 slides. So I'll be done in 10 minutes. So <laughs> I will help us get a little bit back on schedule. Uh, and the second thing is uh, this is actually the, um, uh, th thank you to the PFL. This is actually the second time I've been at this conference. And one of the things I love about it is how all their presentations, and I, I don't think they planned this, kind of build upon each other. And like Peter said, in real time, people are taking from each other's presentations and bring it into their own. And that's awesome because it kind of kind of builds upon that. And you'll see a lot of that in, in what I'm about to present. With each presenter, I was like, wait a second, are they going to talk about exactly what I'm talking about? And it's all slightly different. So, so my topic is kind of why most go-to-market strategies fail. Uh, and to start off that, I think everyone in this room is probably in the midst of implementing some sort of change to their go-to-market strategy. If you're doing any sort of efforts around inbound, outbound, ABM, which has been brought up many, many times, uh, if you're doing uh, serious decisions, new demand unit waterfall, you are about to go undergo some sort of change management in your organization. So as a quick show of hands, how many folks have done one of these strategies are in the process of it in 2018 or in 2019. It's pretty much the entire room. So, exactly. So, go to market strategies are tough, and we've heard a number of speakers talk about it. Jessica just talked about it beforehand, Peter talked about it in his presentation. Uh, and the stats that other folks have said is 70%, according to McKinsey, of new large change managers' efforts fail. 84% of marketing programs are decidedly second rate. So this stuff is really, really hard, and we heard that in every single speech over again, is how we had to have change. Uh, fortunately, uh, and, and so much so that it's hard that there are tons of, um, if, um, uh, uh, jokes around the failures of go-to-market strategies. Uh, to prepare for this presentation, I actually Googled uh, comic strips on failures in go-to-market. And that's actually going to populate most of my rest of my slides. So, <laughs> um, and, I, and most of you guys know this. Uh, per uh, kind of uh, David, David Lewis is talking about storytelling, you guys can probably think about some company, hopefully not the one you're at right now, but probably has, or past one where there was some initiative that just was an abysmal failure. Right, and the executives had no clue. Right, and, and the, the rank and file employees were like, "What were those guys thinking?" So the first one is, and this is the one most of folks have talked about, which is the culture. Right, how do you get buy-in to actually change your go-to-market strategy? Because it is not easy. Uh, because per this comment point, if you ask who wants change, everyone's going to raise their hand, and who wants to change? Everyone's really a little bit qu kind of quiet. So, and we've talked about that over and over and over again. So that's not my main point because there's a lot of books and there's a lot of uh, people who, who are talking about this. But I often feel a lot of reasons why employees aren't really embracing change is because oftentimes executives overlook some of the other factors that are really critical in order for you to be successful and not part of that 70% failure. So the first one, uh, and this, the two that I think about is, uh, and per the intro that led me here, was really around the data. If you don't think through the right data, um, you're going to be part of this Dilbert commercial uh, or cartoon, right? So it's like, hey, when the data is completely wrong or when you don't have the right metrics, which was what Jessica was talking about, you're going to end up being like, and I'll read this out. So his boss goes, use the CRS database to size the market. And he's, Dilbert says, that data is wrong. Well, then, let's use the SIBS database. That data is also wrong. Well, let's, let's go ahead and try to see if we can average them. And his response, sure, I can multiply them too. Right? Bad data is killer. Uh, there's nothing you know, and your, your employees know that. If you're using completely the wrong data to do it, uh, we've been talking about ABM a lot, and if you don't have the right metrics, Sangram's talking about engagement metrics. I know, I'm sure Heidi talked about uh, engagement metrics. If you're not registering the right things, right, it's not going to work. Um, the other part of it is, uh, as a manager, I'll read the next comment strip. All of our data is grossly inaccurate, but I need data in order to manage. If I concentrate hard enough, I can forget that the data is bad, then I can use it. <laughs> right? This is just being completely blind. I have to give him credit. Managing is harder than it looks. 
So, and we get this. So, uh, but I think people oftentimes just focus on, hey, if I just inspire the team and get them to do really, really well, all, everything will work out. And they forget that we have to have the right data. Um, and uh, so similar in the ABM space, I would say, hey, talk to a lot of vendors. Uh, that's why everyone gravitates. You got to get your database in order to lead to account matching is really, really critical. It's about that. Because if you don't have the right data, you can't really run that initiative. The second one in terms of the systems, I would say, is, and in all due respect to Peter from Salesforce, uh, I would say all of us use our CRM. I've never really met anyone who, as they scale up and adopt new CRM, uh, new go-to-market management, will say that their CRM is pristine in Salesforce, right? It often feels very, very kid. Our CRM. Our CRM. <laughs> it's <laughs> pristine. <laughs> exactly. Actually, actually, I've talked to the folks at Salesforce that I know that their CRM. And wh what I kind of feel like it is, is as you're trying to be very innovative, as you're adding these new go to market motions, as you're adding uh, ABM, uh, inbound, outbound, tactile marketing, it can get really, really chaotic. And it can feel like going to a third world country where you've just got too much going on. And it's just chaos. And so, again, if you're trying to innovate around go to market, but your systems look like this and it's all traffic jams all day, it's no wonder your sales and marketing teams have a hard time aligning and working together. Because they don't have the right data and they don't have the right processes to get that done. And I feel when people think about change, they need to think these things through. So what am I suggesting we do about that? <laughs> so, so the first thing is maybe it's just too hard. We should just stop changing, right? So if 70% has failed, maybe we don't want to do it. So this thing is, uh, I think uh, the lady is saying, so what if we don't change at all and something magical just happens? Uh, and you can see the two charts with profits and sales going down. And I think Peter's pre presentation uh, clearly illustrates the fact that that's not an option, right? We got to change, we got to innovate, and we got to do something about that. Um, so what I do suggest uh, as a t for folks is you got to start thinking about the operational foundation. I think this was number five or six in uh, Jessica's presentation. But think through these things. Don't just think about how the shiny new, um, the shiny new tactic or strategy we're going to do. It's a lot of people fail because they forget to identify the metrics. They forget to address their CRM deficiencies and make sure that's right. Connect the data to the right person that who needs it. And then they'll leverage those insights across the entire buying cycle. And so that's my kind of thing is that a lot of companies don't think this thing through. They kind of start running. They think they just can buy a quick new technology and voila, they're done with their go-to-market strategy. This stuff is hard and let's think that thing through. So my final slide and takeaway is when do you need to start doing this? You need to start doing this now. You can't wait till you've already promised on this new initiative, and then you start going off and then be like, okay, then we'll go buy some tech, and all the data will fix itself, and we'll fix all the processes. Um, people kind of, um, in, in our business, people are always like, hey, I don't want to deal with the data issues now. I'm going to wait, right? Uh, and we often find that's not the right thing if you're trying to change and you're trying to progress forward. So uh, the silver slide here is we're hiring a director of change manager to help employees embrace strategic changes. Dilbert's response, or we could come up with strategies that make sense. Then employees would embrace change, right? So if you actually fix the data issues, the process issues, that might make the change a lot better. Uh, the response is, that sounds harder, <laughs> right? And, and that's, my, that's my final takeaway point is, really change management around go-to-market is hard. We are all acknowledging that. We've had tons of presentations around that. Uh, it is even harder if we don't think all the way through and uh, think about things from a data and process perspective and that we need to start thinking about those first or at the same time and not after the fact that after we've promised our board, hey, we're going to deliver this much in, in revenue gain because of this go to market. So that's all I really had. I think I, think I beat 10 minutes. So <laughs> thank you.